Nobel Lecture by Peter Handke. Play the game. Don't make it all about you. Look for challenges, but don't aim for a specific outcome. Ask your ulterior motives. Hold nothing back. Be gentle and be strong. Get involved, and the hell with winning. Don't overanalyze. Don't calculate, but stay alert. Alert for signs. Be vulnerable. Show your eyes. Invite others to look deep. Make sure there's enough space, and try to recognize everyone's own image. Make no decisions you don't feel excited about. Let your let yourself fail. Above all, give yourself time and take the long way round. Never ignore what a tree or a body of water has to tell you. Turn in where you do, you drawn to do so, and give yourself permission to bask in the sun. Never mind your relatives. Offer support to strangers. Bend down to look at trifles. Duck into deserted places. Don't fall for the high drama of destiny. Love conflict to bits. Show your true colors till you prove to be right, and the rustling of leaves turns sweet. Walk around the village. Those words were spoken almost forty years ago by a woman to a man at the beginning of a long dramatic poem. To which I give the title of "Walk About the Villages." In my childhood, when the time came, and when time allowed, my mother would tell me time and again about people from the village called Stara Vas in Slo Slovenia, in German, not stories, but short narr narratives that sounded at least to my ears like unique occurrences. To use、uh, Goethe's phrases. It's possible that my mother shared these accounts with my siblings too, but in my memory, it was always, I was always her sole audience. One of the occurrences went like this: on a local farm, halfway into the mountains, a mentally retarded girl worked like a milkmaid. In those days, people called her feeble-minded. This girl was raped by the farmer and gave birth to a baby boy, but the farmer's wife raised a raised a child as her own. The girl, the actual mother, the actual mother, had strict orders to stay away from the little boy. For all he knew, the farmer's wife was his mother, and one day the boy, still very young but already talking, was playing by himself. Near a barbed wire fence that by the edge of the farm and got caught in the wire. The more he struggled, the more tangled he became. He screamed and screamed until the retarded milkmaid, the feeble-minded girl, or as my mother called her in the dialect spoken between the Salape and the Karawang ranges, the the trimpen, came running. In no time. She'd un unhooked the little boy. When the little boy's presumed mother finally hurried to the spot, while the while the maid was、uh, already back at work, in the barn or out in the fields, the child asked, "Mother, how come the trepan has such gentle hands?" In short, letter a long farewell. This incident became a song. A ballad sung one night in a in a bar in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, with the singer's ex exclamation, ex exclamation, repeated by at the end of the every stanza. And that child was mine, and that child was me. That child was me. Most of other occurrences my mother described to me involved members of her immediate or extended family. And almost always, the main person was one of her brothers, who had later fallen on the field of honor in the World Second World War. Let me try to reproduce reproduce two of those episodes, brief but decisive for my life as a writer. The first episode dealt and deals with with my mother's younger brother, the youngest of the children in the household, and takes place between the wars. In nineteen thirty-six, let's say, it was a night in mid-autumn, a while before dawn, and hence, or in a village,、uh, in villages of Slovenia, 
Janice had been away from home for a month, enrolled in the Marina, a boarding school for boys, preparing to study for the priesthood. The school was located about forty kilometers to the west, the capital of、uh, Carathia. The farm lay in deep silence. The first cocks crow still a long way off, and now, out of nowhere, the sound of sort of sweeping in the courtyard. And who should be sweeping and sweeping and continuing to sweep the courtyard in the dark? But the family is Benjamin, hardly more than a child. And、uh, what he, what had made him come all the way from town in the middle of the night was homesickness. He was an excellent student, by the way, one who loved learning. But in the early hours of the night, he climbed out the ground floor window of the school and followed the highway. In those days, still unpaved, all the way home. But instead of going inside, the doors were never locked. He took the broom and started sweeping the courtyard. In my mother's telling, the day was a Saturday, the day before Sunday, and on Saturday it was a rule. The courtyard has to be swept, and he swept and swept until the day gradually broke. And someone in the family, in my imagination, it's not one of the experiences by my sister, but his sister, made him come inside. He never returned to the bishop's school for boys. Instead, he went went to the next village and did an apprenticeship in a carpentry or, or cabinetry. This occurrence, having undergone a natural transformation, spontaneously, spontaneously as it were, turns up again and again from the outset in my books, my narrative, my narrative excursions or one-man expeditions. With the second occurrence, no such metamorphosis took place. But but if God or fate or whatever so so wills, it might have one yet. After the book, I called. Repetition, a second repetition. At the end of August or the beginning of September, nineteen forty-three, my mother's other brother, the oldest, came home for a couple of weeks, on full full furlough from the Russian front in Crimea, and as he got off the bus, he ran into the person responsible in that area for delivering bad news from the war. This man was on his way to the village to bring word to the family that the youngest brother had died a hero's death for the fatherland on the tundra. And since the death was the death messenger had now unexpectedly run into a member of the household, he figured he he would spare him the visit. He simply handed the notice to the soldier on leave. But then this is what happened. Gregor made his way home and.、Uh, Where he was received with cheers and shouts of joy, as a young man, as a young woman, my mother was、uh, much given to expressions of joy. But during the, his entire leave, he breathed out、uh, not a word to the family about the death of his brother, or as he had called himself in his letters home, Tundra boy. As my mother described it, Gregor, who in Pistan had been a real home body. During his entire leave, he avoided the house, his parents, his sister, even the village, stare at us instead of roaming around day and night. Sometimes even staying out all night in the neighborhood villages of, of Ruda, Ruda, and、uh, where in the company of acquaintances or complete strangers, he cried his eyes out, cried his eyes out. The one-eyed soldier, nah, the crying never stopped. Must have never stopped, and not until last day, when he was walking to the bus to return to combat, did he hand the death notice to his sister, the only family member he'd allowed to accompany him. And a few weeks later, he too was、uh, interred in foreign soil. May it lie lightly upon him. According to the death notice, words later repeated on the memorial plaque in the village cemetery. In the final scene of the dramatic poem, "Walk Around About the Villages," which is set in a cemetery, the woman who spoke at the beginning turns to the man, the secondary character, but primarily, primarily to the other characters in the play, the main characters, the sister and brother who declare war on each other, 
and on themselves as well. And this woman called No Nova will always find it hard to speak other these words. It's just me, offspring of another village. But this you may all be sure. Through me speaks the spirit of a new age, and that spirit has the following to say: Yes, there is danger, and、uh, that alone enables me to speak the way I'm going to speak in resistance. So listen to my dr- dramatic poem. You're right to stop living in days, but don't go waking each other like a pack of barking dogs. No one among you is to blame, and precisely in your fits of despair. You may have realized that you're not really in despair. If you're in despair, you'd be dead already. So don't act as if you are all alone. True, your story offers no comfort you can re- rely on. But stop brooding over to be or not to be. Being is and will continue to be conceivable, and not being isn't conceivable. Recognize how alike you are. Recognize that you're alike. It's just me saying that, but I'm not merely me. I, in these two guises, can be the most flimsy and ephemeral thing on earth, and at the same time, the most all-encompassing, the most disarming. I am the only hero, and it should be the disarming ones. Yes, that I is the essence of human nature that keeps us human. War is far from here. Our 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 armies don't stand gray on gray on gray, tarmac, but yellow on yellow in flowers, yellow throats. Bowing to show respect to a flower is possible. A bird on a branch can be spoken to. So in a world, wrecked by artificial colors, make room for the colors of nature that can revive it. The blue of the mountains is real. The brown of a gun holster isn't. And the person of them you think you know from television, you don't really know. Our soldiers exist in the sky, and the pass from the earth to the sky to pass through us. Move slowly, and in that way become the form without which no distance can take shape. Nature is only promise you can rely on. Yet nature can be neither refuge nor escape. Nature does not provide a god, however. It just has to be checked daily. The clouds passing overhead, even when they race by, slow you down. Who said you you must crush and burn? Have haven't you put your war behind you? Well, bolster the peaceful present and display the serenity of survivors. What looked、uh, from a distance like a menacing death head. Turns out to be a child's play when you come closer. Air out your thousand-year-old bed. Ignore the child's distant daughters. Don't wait for another war. True peace lovers can be found in the presence of nature. Don't show your dissident the devil's profile. The house of strength is in the other's face. Here and now is the festival of gratitude. So let it not be said of you that you fail to take advantage of peace. Let your labor work wonders. Pass it on. But only those who love pass it on. Love just one. That suffices it all. In loving you, I awake to myself, even when most can be uplifted, be upliftable. A virtue eyes from the bistro to lacked creatures. Be real. Follow the caravan music, walk until the van- vanishing lines emerge from the confused tangle, so slowly that the world becomes you becomes yours anew, so slowly that it it becomes clear how it doesn't belong to you. Yes, always keep your distance from power that parades itself as power. Don't complain that you're alone. Be even more alone. Pass. Pass along the rustling. Describe the horizon. Let the beautiful dissolve into nothing again. Describe life images to one another. What was good deserves to exist. Take your time, and be creative. Transform your inexplicable signs into mighty songs. Our art must aim to cry out the heavens. 
Let no one talk you out of beauty. The beauty we humans create is、uh, what shakes us to the core. Devote yourself to demystification, which at the same time reveals the one mystery. Take notice. Whenever a child coming towards you stares at you, August, you are the cause. To take on many disguises, you 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 will be your destiny, and to prefer a jolly swindle into into a truth made public, play the farces of of everyday life, losing yourself in part of the game. Go forth into the unknown regions of the earth, and let let those without illusions grin maliciously. Illusions provide the strength for visions. Yes, let yourself be pierced by yearning from for yearning for form and pass along the healed world. The scorn for laughter you receive stems from ign- ignorance. It's a death rattle of soul cadavers. The dead give you extra light. Don't worry if you can't talk to them. One syllable suffices, but but keep on, keep on on board in in your in your thoughts. Beget the child of peace. Save your heroes. They should be the ones to proclaim war. Leave us in peace. You people from here, you are in charge. Don't let anyone convince you that you are the s- s- sterile. Don't anyone let anyone convince you that you are the star ones at the end of days. Work as close to the original source as ever. Perhaps there are only, no, perhaps there are no be- weirdness left, but that which is wild, that which is always new, continues to be time. The ticking of clocks means nothing. Time is a vibration that helps us get through the this、uh, cursed century. Time, I have you. The blessed day is now. Working effectively, you can feel it. Perhaps there is no such thing as a rational belief, but there is rational belief in the divine shudder. Behold the miracle and forget it. Take the great leap. Joy is the only right form of power. Not till you feel joy, will all be well with the world. It's still. It's still true that in the story we we sh- all share, there is no compass we can rely on. Who is Mary? The child m- murderers in power vanish, unpunished. Peace and quiet doesn't last. The trickling fountains collapse into barricades. Hope is the false windbeat. Killjoys are everywhere. As we walk beneath the sun. As we walk beneath the sun of joy, we drink deep of bitterness. Dear folks from here, the cries of dead will go on forever. Your pleading for mercy will merely elicit the thumbs down sign. So pull yourself together and look at the man in the dark suit and white shirt. Look at the woman across the river who is standing on the balcony in the sun. Prove. With the means at your disposal, our human defiance, a blessing upon every kiss, however fleeting. And、uh, now, each of you, back your seat, fill the space with the demonic energy through repetition. Form is the law, and li- it lifts you up. It- eternal peace is possible. Listen to the caravan music, calculating and allowing. Calculating and knowing. Be heaven bound. Hold fast to this dramatic poem. Walk, walk ever onward. Walk about the villages. If the small occurrences my mother described provided the impetus for my almost lifelong career as a writer, works of art gave me essential form, rhythms, or, to put it more modestly. The oscillations and oomph that allow the impetus to find expression. I'm thinking not only of books but also of paintings, films, and songs.
the earliest oscillations and warmth, however, didn't come from the arts. What stirred and thrilled me through and through as a child was the Slovenian Slavic religious uh, litanies. I heard beneath the rom rom Romanesque arcs of the church near the birthplace. And those I was once mon monotonous and ill, so melodious, you know, you know, invocations just directly heavenward still stir and animate me at 77. They plucked the strings that accompany my further path as a writer, hum heavenly scales and uh, cadendros to me soundless ones, as in the marvelous long Laurentian litany to Our Lady, which contains perhaps a hundred epithets and evocations, of which I shall quote a few here, deliberately leaving them untranslated, with the exception of the repeated response, pray for us. There are some German, I don't, I don't know how to read them. A few years ago, I was in Norway, thanks to Henrik Ibsen, but now, in closing, I'm not going to speak of the playwright and his and our pure gent, but rather two Norwegian occurrences as small as they are unique. The first involves one of the five or six bodyguards with whom I had the pleasure of spending an entire afternoon and evening. It was night, it was late at night, and uh, we were sitting in a quiet bar on Oslo, Oslo's waterfront when the man recited a few poems, first in Norwegian, then in English, that he had stored on his mobile telephone. And all of them were love poems, very tender ones. And no one of the following evenings which I spent wondering, alone at last. And on one of the follow evening, following evenings, which I spent wandering, alone at last, through the empty midnight streets of the Oslo, I saw a man's cihote in front of the lit light display window of, the, of a bookstore. When I was standing behind him, beside him, he turned to me, at the same time pointing to one of the books in the window. Look, my first book, he said, published today, the first day. The person was young, not much more than a child, a textbook example, or a textbook example of a youth, and he was, and he was happy, as only a child can be happy. And the joy he radiated, this author, this creator, warms me still. May it never go cold. So let me use this moment to send in time. Send uh, greetings to those two, the man on the Oslo waterfront and the youth by the bookstore window, west of here or when, wherever they may be. Perhaps I should uh, regret that I can't recite any of my bodyguard's love poems. I did jot down some of them that evening, but then I lost the slip of paper. But in its, but in its place, here is a different poem. That is the uh, soul guard. <laughs>